Pythagoras is one of the first of the Greek mathematicians after Thales to begin to study numbers in an abstract way. Some sources say that Thales may have even been Pythagoras' teacher, recognizing the genius in the young Pythagoras, he perhaps taught him everything he knew. Knowledge on the life of Pythagoras is limited, and there is little certainty. He was born sometime around 580 BC and 569 BC on the island of Samos. He later traveled to Phoenicia and Egypt to study, and some say he made it as far as Babylonia. He then later settled in Croatona, on the boot of what is now Italy, and founded a school. He taught political, philosophical, and religious thought, and his school housed some 300 aristocrats in a secret society. They focused on four areas of study, arithmetica, arith arithmetic but in the sense of number theory, harmonia, music, geometria, geometry, and astrology, astronomy. The Pythagoreans as a sect believed in the beauty and purity of mathematics and nature. The Pythagoreans created some important ideas in mathematics that would later draw much attention. Triangular, square, and pentagonal numbers, as well as figurative numbers, were all explored profoundly by Pythagoras' followers. All followers of Pythagoras attributed their mathematical discoveries to their leader, so it's hard to determine which individuals came up with what theorem. In this video, however, we will explore the theorem Pythagoras is most well known for. But ironically, one he or his followers may not have produced themselves, as there is little evidence to confirm that Pythagoras, or any of his immediate disciples, produced the first in-depth proof of the Pythagorean theorem. A square of sides a plus b is divided into two smaller squares with sides a and b respectively, and two equal right rectangles with sides a and b. These two equal rectangles can be split each into two equal right triangles by drawing the diagonal c. The four triangles can then be arranged along the edges of another equal square of sides a plus b. Now we can represent the sum of the areas of the two squares and two rectangles in two different ways. One way as the sum of the areas of two squares and two rectangles, and one way as the sum of the areas of a square and four rectangles. When we set these two equations equal and remove the areas of the four triangles, we find that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, meaning that the square with side c is equal to the squares with side a plus the square with side b. The discovery that there is a geometrical way to relate the sides of a right triangle led to the problem by the same name the Pythagorean problem. The problem asks to find all positive integers of the Pythagorean equation. Some ancient sources attribute this partial solution to Pythagoras. The solution can be found using an equation that produces a square number from the next smaller square number. We would suppose that 2k minus 1, which represents x squared, is therefore a perfect square, which happens quite a lot. We can now, from this new equation, solve for k and k minus 1. We can then substitute those back into the original equation for the square number, giving us an equation only in m. What we see here is that x is equal to m, y is equal to m squared minus 1 over 2, and x is equal to m squared plus 1 over 2, which satisfies the Pythagorean equation for any odd integer m. We know m must be odd because 2k minus 1 is odd. If we say that m is equal to 2n plus 1, what we'll see is that x is equal to 2n plus 1, y is equal to 2n squared plus 2n, and z is equal to 2n squared plus 2n plus 1, which is the result that Pythagoras supposedly got. This vi video finishes our section on Pythagoras and his supposed solution for the Pythagorean theorem. Thanks for watching this video in our series on the history of Greek math mathematics. Click the links here to watch the next video in our playlist, watch the full playlist, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.